Hey guys, time for the big final. You guys have been awesome with all the suggestions and so much support. Thank you all for that. I have a lot of info, my ideas and my own thoughts to share with you. So keep an open mind. And because today is decision day, the scoring system will be changed to reflect exactly that. The score will go one to five, again, five being the best, but no boat can have the same score on each requirement, meaning I have to pick a winner for each one of the requirements. This is going to be fun. So let's get down to it straight away. The contenders from the previous shootouts are the Jimmy Skiff 2 and the Mibo 12. Oh, and I have great news about the Mibo 12. The version that I'm going to review here or score here is a version with an 8 square meter balanced lug sail. I contacted the designer and Klaus said that the center of effort of the balanced lug and the cat rig are pretty much the same, only a small adjustment is needed. And if anyone wants to build a Mibo 12 with that option, it will help you implement it. So great news here. Now, these two will be battling against a design I had pre-selected from the start and another one which is based on that same design. And this will come as no surprise to many of you and will leave others in disbelief, at least until I show them why this design smokes everything else when put against my requirement list. It will even beat the undisputed champion so far, the Goat Island Skiff, and by a considerable margin too. And without further ado, meet the Ozzy Goose and the Goose Explorer. These two designs are the most unconventional designs from all the shootouts. But I can tell you, they score really high against all other designs. You just can't make these things up. So, the requirements. Simple to build. There is no boat easier to build than the Ozzy Goose. Almost every panel joins at right angles. The Jimmy Skiff and the Mibo 12 are very similar, but I will give four points to the Jimmy Skiff because it has only three panels, while the Mibo has three panels on the bottom. And the Explorer, due to the extra parts on like laminating the cabin beams and making the, the structure for the extended seats and the hatch, will be in last place here with the two. Cheap to build. The Ozzy Goose, well, you can build it out of all six millimeter plywood, all 5mm plywood with glass bottom or 4mm everything except the hull which will be except the bottom which will be 6mm and the last option takes two sheets of 6mm and four sheets of 4mm plywood and that's the, that's the one I would eventually choose if I was going to build a goose there's no glass needed for the bottom just some epoxy and little lumber if you go the stitch and glue method which again it's the one i would choose you can't really build a boat much cheaper than these guys it should get a six not a five but it doesn't matter it just gets the crown the explorer it will take a bit more lumber same plywood same everything the jimmy skiff apparently takes four sheets of six millimeters and two sheets of nine millimeters I'm not sure if it's glassed or not, I did not see any glass on the building video I watched, uh, but don't quote me on this, so it gets 3 points. The Mibo 12 takes 6.5 six, six sheets of 4mm plywood, 1 of 9mm and half a sheet of 12mm. It also needs to be glassed, so I'll give you 2 points on this one. Now, simple rig and single sail. I will not rate this because all the boats here now have very simple rigs and a single sail. And actually the Mibo 12, the Explorer and the Ozzy Goose will all take the exact same sail. With the Jimmy Skiff taking a different sail, like a mutton or something like that. Which I don't fancy, I'm very partial to the balance lug. But let's not rate this because basically they all fulfill the requirements. High freeboard. Any way you look at this, the Goose Explorer will win. There's no doubt about that. As for the other three, well, it depends how you look at it. High freeboard alone is easily measurable and it might help keeping you dry, but it won't prevent water from getting into the boat when excessively healed. Not more than a lower freeboard boat with extended side decks. And since all boats 
featured here have lower freeboard than the chop I might face, I'm gonna give preference to not getting the boat flooded. So the OZ Goose comes in second with four points, the Mibo 12 with 46 centimeters midships will get three and the Jimmy Skiff will get two. If I got this wrong with the Jimmy Skiff, please let me know, but I cannot find any exact measurement for the midship freeboard on the Jimmy Skiff. Just from the videos and the pictures, it looks less than 46 centimeters. Spacious. The Explorer with its cabin and wide seats has plenty of uh, room for you to sit and a nice cabin to put all your stuff in there. So that's a good thing on a cruising dinghy. The Ozy Goose has a, well, it's an open plan boat, of course, um, and it has more space in between the seats than the other two. So that's four points for the Ozy Goose. And the Mibo 12 has a shorter floor space than the, um, than the Jimmy Skiff. So it will be two points for the Mibo and three points for the Jimmy Skiff. Carries four. The Goose Explorer does carry four people two outside and if you want you can put two sleeping in the cabin so for a short trip to Rat Island and back that's a two mile trip I'm sure they wouldn't mind going in the cabin if they have to. The Ozy Goose is a more stable platform than the other two and has more space in between the seats as well. Uh, between the Jimmy Skiff and the Mibo 12 uh, they're very similar but the Jimmy Skiff has longer side seats so it gets three points and two for the Mibo. Sleeping space again the Explorer takes the crown here. Two people can sleep cozily in that cabin, no problem whatsoever. And for the second place, I'm gonna rate this according to my needs. The Goose has a distance from transom to center case of five feet, nine inches approximately. And I'm, I'm five seven, so that's enough for me to sleep. And since it's the widest space between the two seats of the three skiffs, I will give this the four points. If you're a bit taller than me, don't give up yet because there is a way you can still sleep on the Aussie Goose. You just need to tweak the mid panel or the mid bulkhead. So stay tuned. If you are a taller person and you have narrow shoulders, you might as well go for the Jimmy Skiff. That thing has a very long space because there's no centerboard in the middle. It's actually in one of the side tanks. Uh, so you'll be all right there, just a bit narrower or actually a lot narrower than the, um, the OZ Goose. And the Mibo 12 has six feet two inches from transom to the centerboard uh, and is probably just as narrow as the Jimmy Skiff. Light to lounge. Well, here they're all light enough to drag up and down a ramp. So let's rate them by weight. The Mibo 12 takes the crown here with just 50 kilos. Um, the Ozy Goose can be built to just over 50 kilos if you use the 4mm sides and 6mm bottom. The Goose Explorer using the same method uh, with just some added lumber will come at just under 60, very close to 60. And the Jimmy Skiff it's rated at well 50, 60 kilos, so that's the last one. The Goose and the Explorer weight were calculated using 3D models that I created and uh, applying a density of 500 kilograms per cubic meter uh, to the plywood and the spruce structure. Um, it's, it's worth what it's worth. Um, you can actually build it uh, lighter if you get 420 kilograms per cubic meter plywood and uh, some polonium wood or whatever it's called which is almost half the weight of the spruce so you can, there's room for improvement there of course the weight i just showed you on the 3d model doesn't account for seven to eight kilos of resin about three kilos of paint and one kilo of fittings uh, if you add this to the to the weight shown that's how i got the 50 just over 50 for the Ozy goose and uh, just under 60 for the Goose Explorer. Don't quote me on this, it's just my models and the software prediction. Car toppable. No doubt who the champion is here. The Mibo 12 at 15 kilos will be a lot easier to put on top of that car than any other design, both weight and shape-wise. The Goose will follow as a close second. 
and the Jimmy Skiff, um, although it's a bit or marginally heavier than the Explorer, uh, the Explorer is a lot bulkier, so I will give three points to the Jimmy Skiff and two points to the Goose Explorer. Although, if we superimpose the OZ Goose and the Goose Explorer, you can see that it's not that much more uh, volume than the other one. It just makes it awkward. Maybe if you have a big car or an SUV or a 4x4, that will be alright for you. In my car, I don't think so. And guys, if you like my videos, if you find this content useful, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. It will help YouTube share it with more people. Also, if you want to help me with the new build, you can do so by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Thanks again for your support. Fast. Now, here we need to assume that all these uh, models here will reach planning speed. The Goose is a box of surprises, pardon the pun, <laughs> and I can assure you that we'll reach the 12 knots that I have set as top speed goal. Uh, so that's a 5 in my books. Assuming the Mibo 12 gets the same sale as the Goose, I can see no reason for it not to be a really fast boat as well. Um, and the Explorer has a bit more rocker than the Aussie Goose, so it will not go as fast. I'll give you the 3. The Jimmy Skiff has that sale that we all know, but I can't see a reason why it shouldn't take a lug sale and be just as fast. But it doesn't have it, so it's a two. Right, flotation. I believe that all these boats have very close or over 600 liters or 1,300 and something pounds of flotation. Some might actually surpass it. I don't know the exact values, so I don't want to score this and get it wrong. I can show you uh, on the 3D model that the OZ Goose has over 500 liters just on the side tanks. Not taking into account that you can actually close the front compartment or the bow compartment and that will give you a few hundred liters more. And the Goose Explorer, well, that could be on the thousands, couldn't it? <laughs> but if it turtles, there's a danger that water might come in through the hatch, although the boat won't sink, far from it, uh, I wouldn't be able to quantify it as flotation anyway, so no score for any of them here. No whaling. Well, here I'll have to give it to the goose, of course. There will be no water in the boat whatsoever after a capsize. Yep, no water. Uh, from all the other models we looked at in the shootouts and most of the models that you suggested, None of them had this characteristic. So yes, the Goose is unique in more than just its shape. Next comes the Goose Explorer. Uh, I don't think you ever get water in there, but there is a chance of getting some water in there if it turtles, so it gets the four points. The Jimmy Skiff, because it has longer side tanks and probably a lower freeboard, that might actually uh, help him not retain so much water once he turns upright. Uh, so he gets 3 points and uh, Mibo 12 will get 2 points. And fun to sail! Well, <laughs> here it's not fun at all. Of course I'm referring to the advantage the Goose has compared to all other designs. This thing is so stable, you can just dance in it if you want. You can step on the, on the gunnels or the side decks, this thing won't flip. Uh, you can go to the bow and stand there as well, try that on a goat, no chance. When weather is very rough and others are worried, you can go out knowing that your boat won't flood, won't sink, there won't be any water for bailing and it will fly. You can sleep aboard with no additional structures, uh, it carries tons of gear if you wanted to, uh, any hatches you might put inside the boat, they only have to be splash proof because water will never get in there. Uh, I could go on and on. <laughs> and I hear some of you saying the, it's not a pretty boat, some actually call it fugly. Okay, I'll give you that. Or are we just formatted to this hull shape? Well, the goose certainly wins when it comes to coloring our waterways.
So I will ask you again, do you know of any boat which will match my requirements list or even your requirement list better than the Aussie Goose? Let me know. Here we have a boat that can be built lighter than a laser dinghy, faster than most 12 feet boat you can build, with tons of flotation and no bailing needed after a capsize. And I didn't even have to go to Pandora to get some unobtainium to build my boat, like some suggested. And the ones that were laughing then, well, maybe they're not laughing so much now. Remember, you will only be a fool until you are proven right. And if you are curious how the goose would score against the goat and the other contenders on the previous shootouts, have a look at the complete table updated for the new rigs on the Mibo 12 as well. And guys, these are all great boats and they have proven it over the years. Again, the scores here are just my interpretation of the designs, uh, videos and available info of boats that I have never sailed. So your opinion might be very different. Yes, it smokes every single boat from this shootout and the previous ones. So let's check the podium and final thoughts afterwards. In third place, we have a tie here, the almighty goat and the little Mibo 12. Completely different boats for different needs, but they both scored very high. Second goes for the Goose Explorer and the winner by miles, it's the Aussie Goose. So let's go to the final thoughts. So final thoughts, any of these boats is great. Uh, it depends on your preference. Uh, the use you want to give it, uh, where and in which conditions you want to sail it. Uh, so let's say if you don't really want to cart up your boat, uh, you can always build a goat with the side tanks. You get a, a 70 kilo boat roughly, which will, well, it will be hard to beat uh, in speed and fun factor. That's just undisputable so far. If you want a great car topper, but you can't look past the looks of the, the Goose, well, the Mibo 12 would be my first choice. If sailing, cruising, sleeping comfortably, it's your main objective, then the Goose Explorer has no match here. You and your gear will be dry at all times inside that cabin, and all this in a 12-foot package that can be built and launched by hand by anyone. Shame it's awkward to cart up due to the bulkiness if not, this would actually be my first choice. But if you favor function over form, then the Aussie Goose is the likely choice. It checks all the boxes. I will try to make a video about the Aussie Goose, a more detailed video, and about the Mibo 12 as well, if there's enough of you who actually are interested in uh, knowing more about the Mibo 12. You can always put the questions about these two models on the comment section below. I will answer them on the next videos. Until then guys, stay safe and I'll see you soon.